All right, on today's Gospel Grit, I want to cover uh, what I think is a vital ingredient if we're really going to uh, be able to declare the joy of living all of Christ for all of life. Um, I don't ever want us to get so caught up in that um, nomenclature that we forget the the substance of it, right? We forget the, the real driving element of it all. So this missing ingredient, um, I'll actually talk about it in a second. But today I, I did um, an experiment with the kids and I said this, I'm so angry. I'm so happy. Oh man, uh, this is the worst news ever, right? <laughs> it's really hard for me for me to even think these things through because I'm trying to show an opposite face of what I'm saying, right? I'm so happy right now, right? It's I have an angry face, but I'm so happy, right? Or I'm so mad, right? A happy face, but I'm so mad, right? Some of it could just look downright crazy and psycho, and <laughs> I'd never want to watch that video to see what I look like. But uh, that experiment is just to, to show my kids that something seems off, right? There's there, there's something that doesn't match what I'm saying, doesn't match how I look, right? Um, what I'm claiming to to be is not matched up by the actions that are being externalized by my demeanor, by my face, by my tone. And it's it's backwards. It's dead. It's counterproductive. It's counterintuitive. And so today, what I want to talk about is the missing ingredient that is so vital. I don't I shouldn't say missing. What I, what I want to say is just the vital ingredient that must be present in what we do. And I'm going to talk about this from two angles today. It's going to be in the home and in the household of God, um, us in our in our uh, domestic places in our homes as <clears throat> husbands, fathers, mothers, uh, you know, wives, as siblings, as sisters, as brothers, as cousins, whatever, whatever uh, space you occupy in your home and also in the household of God. So I'm going to be going back and forth, giving examples of each uh, with no sequential order or just, you know, as, as it comes to my mind. But this ingredient is really joy, right? Joy is really what what drives must drive all that we do right it's um it's for the joy that was set before christ that he did what the, uh, what he accomplished on that cross yes a man of sorrows acquainted with grief um yes that that real sorrow but always rejoicing but but the habit of christ's life was a habit of joy um really joy was what fueled him right he greatly rejoiced at many things that were before him and so what, what we need to always keep ever before us is is like that silly example i gave the kids are we joyful in taking all of Christ to all of life or or is it becoming almost like a, a stoic drill sergeant and, and you know just faithful um, you know cadets that are just stone face stone cold no joy just yes sir no sir you know just this weird dead orthodoxy right I, I'm, I'm not um, indicting anyone I'm, I'm not bringing I, I haven't seen this to, to be the case but it's just something even in our household that uh, that which is something that we constantly um, are reminding ourselves of because it could really easily become in the discipline in the routine in the day-to-day -day. you can lose sense of that joy because you do want obedience you do want um, uh, a, a God honoring uh, home and children who are obedient right but if we begin to just lose that joy in it all you know yeah as we go to family worship and, and it's all just oh you know the kids are hating family worship because this is when dad explodes this is when mom goes crazy uh you know this is the worst part of my day is family worship because how you know kids pick up on that type of stuff um if, if you come home and you know as a husband and your wife knows okay daddy's gonna get home and the, the the aroma of this house is about to change it's about to get very ugly and very just heavy and and and, and serious and again these things communicate right it's like that example i gave in the beginning so we really we really need to always keep central to our heart to our mind to our worldview to all that we do is joy right we have so much joy. We always need to start with the real deep seated joy that we have in Christ, right? Duty with no delight. That's um, like the Pharisees, right? Uh, delight and no duty. That's just chaos, right? You're just delighting and, and, and there's no duty and there's no order, right? But when you really have a delighting in Christ that flows into the duties that you have set before you, that that's that, 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 the that um, that potent driving force in the Christian life. Again, we're not just checking boxes and, and, and becoming uh, drill sergeants to get you know our kids to walk in orthodoxy, to get our church to walk in orthodoxy, right? We're not um, 
lording it over people to come out, you know, to prayer night or, you know, to become part of a study, right? Uh, or to fellowship with us. And it's like a, you know, just an ugly, joyless. No, it's, it's actually the opposite. And I'm going to touch on that in, in the closing of this video, but I've been, I've seen, uh, homes that, that of non-Christians and it's a delight. It's joyful. There's an aroma about the place. Granted, I do want to grant this. It's false basis. It's a false substance. It's not, it's not a real delight in things that have ultimate meaning, but yet they have real delight, right? The, the children are so excited to see their father. The father is so excited to see his wife and his children. And you see, oh man, there's, there's something of the created order in that though they don't have the substance of Christ, there's actually a lot of joy in that. And then uh, people cling to that. Oh, that's such a fun, such a fun family, right? Or even think about those unbelieving families that are part of softball leagues. They're part of, I don't know, bowling leagues. Uh, they're, they're, they, they go out, you know, on Saturday morning hikes with their friends and they have their own little community, right? Oh, uh, you think of CrossFit, right? They have their community and there's joy in that community. There, there's a, com a camaraderie in that, in, in that community. There's even joy in the disagreements and the different personalities. And again, this is built on fal faulty foundation. I'm not saying that it's going to last. I'm not saying that, that we need to emulate that because they have something. No, I'm, I'm saying they are walking in tune with the created order, though the foundation is off. And what I'm saying is I've seen Christian households, Christian communities, who don't have that joy, who don't have that aroma of Christ. And there's nothing beautiful about that. Um, I, I've heard of solid reformed families just having children who hate the faith. And obviously we know God is sovereign, but God works through means. And, and, and I think about, you know, what was there joy in that home? Was there a joy in the things of the Lord? Or was it just, you know, uh, you know, just a stone face, this furrowed brow, this, this cold, dead orthodoxy. And even remember, what Christ said about about the Pharisees is he basically said, you know, what they have external, it's it's actually pretty good. You know, I'm paraphrasing. He said, but it's their internal that's off, that's wicked. You know, he essentially said something to the effect of, um, you know, you should do as they say, but be careful because they are coming from whitewashed tombs, right? Their externalism is good, but their internalism is absolutely terrible. And sometimes we, as people who hold a good theology, a good solid doctrine, we can tend to almost be like that. Well, I have all the confessions down. I have all, all, all the doctrine down. I have all the confessions down. Uh, you know, I really, I really take this Christianity stuff very, very serious. Right? And, I'm not, and I'm not talking about immaturity versus maturity. And if that's where your mind goes in this, you don't get it, right? Being joyful doesn't make you more immature. Being joyful, make, it's actually an expression of true, rich maturity in Christ, true identity in Christ. And this isn't, you know, like some type of video to say, you know, we should all just joke around and, you know, make stupid jokes all the time. It's, again, if that's where your mind goes, you don't understand joy in Christ. Uh, th there's a real vibrant joy out of the joy of knowing who Christ is for you, what Christ has done for you, who you are in Christ, how you've been adopted and engrafted into Christ and how you have all the blessings of salvation in Christ. You have every spiritual blessing. You are as secure today as you'll ever be. You know, you're, you're, you're engrafted into uh, Christ in such a way that you're a co-heir with him, that you uh, by the spirit can, can cry, Abba, Father, and the father hears you and you, you know, I've been given the spirit all, all these things that come with salvation, there's so much joy in that. There's so much substance in that, that we need to see that if we're being found joyless and then the expressions in our homes uh, as fathers, as husbands, as wives, that there's no joy. Again, as I started the video, that silly example, there's something incongruent about that. There's something that doesn't match up, right? Um, I, I really want my kids to remember me as the most joyful man, you know, and in the hard times, yes, my, you know, my father had real pain. He had real sorrow. He, he suffered, you know, for the glory of Christ, but all in all, um, he was a man that was joyful, right? Like Christ who had, uh, you know, moments and and real seasons of uh, you know this sorrow yet he was always rejoicing right he was never falling out of joy in his father even when he's crying my god my god why have you forsaken me he's still crying my god my god he's still entrusting himself to his god so this isn't again some facade or some you know net flanders always smiling always you know a, a fake joy no this is a real deep-seated joy that the aroma of our lives is filled with that joy of christ that that real happiness right to be blessed you know another word for blessed is to be happy you know happy are those who are uh, b poor and contrite in spirit why because they have the blessing of knowing god right um so when we're truly blessed we're literally saying we're happy we're joyful 
we have what we what, all that we need in Christ. And so I, I really want my children to look at their parents and say, my parents were joyful. They, they saw the joy of the Christian life in my parents. Uh, so, so when we think about all of Christ for all of life, right? When we think about taking um, Christ to all that we do, we must uh, go through those avenues. You know, we must go through those veins, as it were, with joy, with complete joy. And, and you know, moving this over even to, to some degree to the household of God, I just want you to think about what even Paul says to the church at Thessalonica. He says, for what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Is it not you, he says, for you are our glory and joy. And Paul says in Philippians 2, in regards to being in the same mind, the same accord, and you know, just that overall unity, Paul says, complete my joy. In Philemon 7, you know, even we heard recently from the sermon, Paul says, for I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. So even in the household of God, or even in our homes with our children, again, I want, I derive so much joy from my children and I want them to know my, my dad delighted in me. I want my wife to know that she's my joy. She's my crown. She's my glory and vice versa. Right. And, and same thing with children to me in the same context with the, with the church, uh, both local and universal, uh, there should be such a joy amongst us where, where we are literally delighting in God, in Christ and in one another. And again, that's what really fuels this mission. Uh, that that's what really will take all of Christ to all of life. It's the joy that that's fueling it, the joy of the gospel. So the reason I really want to press this home is because if we do this as some form of dead orthodoxy, some form of uh, religious externalism, uh, we're already starting at the wrong point, right? You imagine, you know, you have a father who, um, you know, he's going to teach his children the catechisms. So, okay, children, come here, time for catechisms, you know. Question one, you know, you go through question one and the children are you know, like, why is this so scary? Why is he talking like this? You know, and you know, the children mess up and come on, guys, get it together. You know, children are all scared and all scared. You know, that's that that's not going to that's going to go nowhere. You know, that's going to absolutely go nowhere. Demand obedience. Right. You know, uh, really discipline as you need to. But it, it shouldn't be that type of cold, you know, just dark type of. Um, aroma in our homes and that's just a small example but I really want us to take that to all things because I'm firmly believing that joy and, and beauty in that joy is what attracts right and we need to show the joy and the beauty of Christian husbands we need to show the joy and the beauty of Christian wives we need to show the joy and the beauty of Christian marriage uh, marriages Christian households of Christian children uh, of, of um of, of the joy of parenting, the joy of having more children, the, the 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 joy of living in the church, living in the community. How many churches do you hear complain about the community and and, and complain about their brothers and sisters in the Lord? And and that's really um, to the detriment of the of, of our own church, not our church, Christ Redeemer, but of the church universal. Because it's it's you know we should actually be driving much joy now. Again, if there's sin, if there's things that need to be addressed, again. Yes, there's a time and place for that. But by and large, as we're enjoying this life, you know, even in our disagreements, there should be so much fellowship and so much joy surrounding those things. And again, this is all a derivative of the joy that we ultimately have in Christ. So I really think that if we as a Christian people could show in this dark and dying and chaotic and and ugly, you know, worldliness that we're seeing, if we could show, you know, against the backdrop of all this chaos and ugliness, Christ and the joyful beauty that he gives us in the ordering that he's giving us, you know, in our self-government, our family government, our church government, our family joy, our community joy, and showed, you know, just how beautiful these things are. That's what's going to, in a sense, stand out against the ugliness. But if we're just as joyless as the world, or if we have no substance joy, if we're fleeting, if we're unstable, if we're emotional, if we're controlled by circumstances, you know, that looks just like the world, then there's not much different. We just have different so-called saviors. But when Christians can really show the gem of the gospel and the delight that comes from that, the joy that comes from that, the joy and discipline, the joy in 
growing pains, the joy in the church body, the joy in even disagreements and, and being able to march forward in light even of those disagreements, um, the joy in the routine, the joy in the mundane, the joy in husbandry and, and wives and marriages and, and the joy of doing catechisms and the joy of park days and the joy of <clears throat> going you know, out together to get food and all this joy, I'm telling you. This is where the ingredient must always be found in that joy. That's the ingredient that I, I really want to undergird, you know, and fuel what we do. God, the gospel brings joy and we need to have gospel joy as we take Christ to all of life. And as we do this, this is what really uh, causes you know, beautiful potency in the Christian life. Let's create such a culture of joy in our church, in our homes, that our kids love love not just christ but love the church love his people love the world that he's given us and and as we do this right i really think that generationally the kids will look back and say oh no you know my life was absolutely the best you know um yes there was sin yes the things were dealt with but even that was dealt dealt with with joyful hearts and i loved our local church and i, and I loved our family of god and I, I just loved seeing us do all of those things with joyful hearts so this missing ingredient right this, this substance that we truly have in, in Christ and taking him to all that we do, it must be done with joyful hearts. And as it's done with joyful hearts, you'll see the aroma of your life really begin to change. And you'll see that the beauty that attracts others to Christ and the beauty that it is for your own soul to see Christ really be taken to all of life.